Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. As a hobbyist, I have two favorite things when building things for games. One is creating things that will create a more enjoyable play experience for my players. Things like custom models for them, maybe making a great music playlist or whatever other game aids. The other is solving the problems that come up trying to create these things. And now that Idols of Torment is essentially done, it's in production and about to get shipped out to all our Kickstarter backers. This means I can actually spend more time just playing this game that we created, which in turn leads me to wanting to make more things for it. And this past week, I worked on two items uh, to improve the gaming experience. The first are Heroic Lost. This game has models, the Lost, that are objectives that the players are trying to collect, to reap. And these models, we have them as 3D printable ones and as plastic ones. But in certain scenarios, there's another type of lost called the heroic lost. These are ones that have survived more torments, have picked up weapons in the echo and are actually able to inflict some sort of damage and fight back towards the idols that are hunting them. So I needed some lost models that were weaponized. I decided to use the plastic ones that we have because any bits that I might use would probably come from plastic models. And this would just make it easier for the bits to bond together. Also, plastic is generally more flexible than resin. So, you know, it's probably a safer bet for gaming. But there were a few problems uh, in trying to do this. The lost models are a pretty small scale. They're humans on a one inch base and they are not modeled in a heroic way at all. Meaning bits from a lot of other model kits would be too large for them, look weird. Also, some of the poses just weren't heroic. Some of them just didn't lend themselves to conversion. Now, the first problem was solved by using bits from North Star models, uh, the stuff they have for Frostgrave, because they're also in a smaller traditional scale and they're plastic and they come in a separate bit, so I didn't have to chop you know, arms and weapons off of models, they were already separate, which was great. And I started with the models that were more easily converted. I picked bits that, you know, just went on naturally, that felt right. And I used plastic cement to bond the plastic together, making them super strong. But eventually I got to some that needed a lot more conversion. There were some that had like their hands up against their body instead of outright. So I couldn't just chop the hands off and glue a hand with a sword because they were posed in a way that just didn't work for that. And there was one that I really struggled with. I had to actually carve away her hand from her body uh, and then find an arm or something that I could put on and create a new pose. I tried a bunch of different items for this one and I just didn't like any of them. Eventually I landed on a hand holding a torch because the positioning kind of worked and somehow her pose felt right with this, but I would regret this decision later. Eventually I got them all done and put onto bases and I was happy with most of them. They looked exactly how they needed to look. But another problem came up, uh, a small one. I've been using this Vallejo texture paste on all of my Idols of Torment models, but I was finally out. Uh, the remaining bit I had was totally dried and hard. This was no problem though. My recent foray into caulking crafts saved my day. I just made up my own texture paste. Caulking, sand, a little bit of water, perfect. I will probably never buy texture paste again now that I know how to do this. Then I primed them and Zenithal highlighted them. For the color scheme, I wanted to do something a little bit different to make them stand out from the regular Lost models. I went with this blue and green kind of ghostly effect that would really stand out on the board. This would also avoid the problem of trying to match the paint job I did on the ones like a year ago. And they looked all right, and I was okay with uh, this color scheme for their robes, but I wanted their skin tone differentiated. And because these were the heroic loss, the ones who gained some humanity, I wanted a more realistic skin tone versus the really white pale ones on the original models. I tried several different speed paints for the skin tones and none of them seemed right. I don't know, they just, they just looked off to me and I wasn't feeling it. So I went to, back to the drawing board and reprimed them. Now here's a lesson, don't be afraid to do that. Just if you don't like something, just start again, reprime it and pick new colors. And this time I picked a bluish gray contrast paint, which was perfect for the robes. And it ended up looking almost identical to my originals. So from here on out, I just ran with that and did try to make them match. 
But to make them a little bit different, I decided to use some neon yellow to highlight their eyes. The normal models just had white glowing eyes. The yellow gave it a little bit of extra pizzazz or whatever. And it was all right. I, I didn't mind it. Uh, however, I also used that ink to color the flame on the model carrying the torch, as well as some object source lighting on it. And it looked bad. It looked really bad. I hated it. I absolutely just did not like it at all. But I had no idea how to fix it at that point, so I just went ahead and finished the rest of the models, painting their bases and their weapons and doing highlights. After trying a bunch of different stuff to make that magic green light torch work, I came to the conclusion that it wasn't just the paint that was the problem, it was actually the item. The torch was too different than all the other weapons and it just stood out and looked strange. She needed a normal weapon. So I cut the flame off of the uh, painted model, found another bit, a flail, and I glued that on. I was able to use the handle from the torch, which was nice. Of course, this meant I had to start all over again with this one model, prime it and highlight it for the third time, and then repaint it to match the rest. But afterwards, I was much more happy with this. And I had a complete set of Heroic Lost ready for games, but I wasn't done. I had one more problem to solve. I just want to take a brief moment to talk about this video sponsor, Witch Song Miniatures. My mini factory's number one most subscribed to Tribe by a long shot. While most 3D printing subscription brands charge anywhere from like nine to $12 a month, Witch Song Miniatures only charges $1 a month. Yeah, that's right, $1 a month. Don't be fooled by that price though. They have some of the best models on the market despite the low cost to entry. With everything they create not only being super detailed, but also coming pre-supported and pre pre-hollowed. Now check this out. For the month of August, new subscribers are not getting one, not two, but three amazing models totally free. The super popular Fungal Queen, the massive Serpent, the Four Armies, and the creepy as hell Greater Crystal Heart Spider. Plus my Black Magic Craft viewers get an extra special treat with 90% off Witch Song's entire back catalog on their My Mini Factory store from now until the end of the month. You just gotta use the promo code BMC90 at checkout. Monthly rewards, a welcome pack, bonus miniatures just for you, and all kinds of other fun stuff, all for just one single dollar a month. I'm not joking, one dollar. So what are you waiting for? Go check out Witch Song Miniatures, grab a subscription for a buck, and pick up tons of cool minis off their store for 90% off with the promo code BMC90. Thanks Witch Song for sponsoring this video. Now back to the project. Now this, this is the problem that I was actually really excited to deal with. This game has another type of guardian model, statues. And the idea is that these are angels and demons that were frozen in time and stone when heaven and hell collapsed in on each other. They populate the echo and activate in certain situations, acting as AI driven enemies against the players. And I needed models for this. The problem is that you need a statue model and then once it's activated, you need to identify it as an angel or demon because you don't always know what it is beforehand. So initially I thought, okay, I'm gonna have some statue models and then I'll have some demon models and some angel models and you can just switch them as needed. I didn't like this because one, that's a lot of extra unnecessary models. Then they would have different forms. The idea to me is that these statues spring to life and it's just their essence, their energy that is kind of different whether they're an angel or a demon, but they look the same. So how do you have a model that can take three different forms as one form? Well, first off, you need a generic model of some kind that will work for all three scenarios. And I thought the best place to turn was to classic historical statues from ancient times. And what's great is there is a perfect solution to get these sort of models. There's an organization called Scan the World that actually goes into museums and scans statues and then uploads them for free for you to use as STLs that you can print out, which is super cool. So I looked through their library and found a bunch that I thought looked appropriate that could be either a demon or an angel in a kind of generic way and suited the aesthetic of the game. Now these models were all different sizes, so I had to bring them into Lychee and resize them. I kept them all a similar height and used a 32 millimeter base as a reference point because mechanically these models are on 32 millimeter bases, but I did keep them kind of tall, taller than the idle models because they're supposed to be the most imposing things on the board. 
but still fit on those bases. Unfortunately, these models don't come pre-supported like they do from a lot of miniature companies. And I'm not very good at doing my own supports because I usually don't have to. So I just lazily tilted them and did the auto supports, which I knew might not be great because auto supports by default aren't the best for removal, but I just wanted to make sure that the prints didn't fail. So I just used the default settings for auto supports. Now, one thing you might not know is that you can leave your resin in your printer vat uh, between prints. And I do this myself and never clean them in between prints. But I had left this resin for several months. I haven't been doing a lot of printing lately and I actually wasn't sure if this would be an issue. I gave it a really good stir because it kind of separated in the vat, pressed print and hope for the best. And you know what? It worked just fine. The prints came out great. Uh, the auto supports worked and I had no failures. I did have a lot of support point damage on the models, little nubs sticking out and even worse little holes where the supports broke off. So I just did a quick fix on these. I sanded out the little nubs and I used super glue painted on to fill the holes. This isn't a technique that I would recommend on a high detailed model, but it worked in this case. And I had never done this before. I never even thought of it. So again, problem solving creates the knowledge of another new technique, which is awesome and why I love it. And these only required a very basic paint job. I primed them in white and did an oil wash using two different black oil washes, one that was tinted blue and one that was tinted brown, mostly because I didn't know which one I would like better and using both, you know, just gave them a bit of variance. They were both fine and they looked fine and dandy. But with these statues painted, I had their generic form, but I needed a way when they were activated to actually indicate whether they're an angel or a demon. I thought the best way to do that would be with different colored bases. And magnets would be the best way to hot swap bases on these. And I don't normally like magnets for terrain or our models. They're usually pretty gimmicky, but in a situation like this, they actually solve a problem and are a great solution. To magnetize the bottoms, I drilled a hole uh, with a bit that was the same diameter as the magnets in the bottom of the statues. When you're using magnets, you wanna make sure that your polarizations are all the right way so that the magnets attract rather than repel. To do this, I made a little uh, application jig, which is just one magnet glued to a bit. So it would always pick up and grab a magnet the same way that I would then glue into place on the base. And then for the base, I could just drop some super glue, drop on a magnet and use a magnetized model to position that base magnet and get it polarized the right way. This was so simple and it worked great. I was a little concerned that the magnets would break off of the super glue eventually. So I dropped in some baking soda to really secure it. You could also use green stuff or milliput or something like that. And I can't believe how well this worked. These, it, it just worked so great. And I'm actually thankful that the magnets were strong enough that I didn't have to drill out the bases. They worked through the base. The only thing left was to paint them two different colors. When your mom says we have Lego at home. <laughs> and with that, I had the absolute perfect solution for angels and demons. Model is on the board unactivated. Once it activates and you know what model it becomes, you just pop on the magnetic base and drop it back down on the table. You can clearly see if it's a demon or an angel. You also have the actual 32 millimeter base for the mechanics and measuring in game. It's perfect. We even tested them out in a game the next night and they worked wonderfully. I love seeing them on the table. Not, not only did they mechanically work well, but these scan the world models just, oh, they fit the aesthetic of the Echo so perfectly. Haven't used the Heroic Lost yet, but I know these will also work really well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making these two sets of models. Even though they're pretty simple, it was very satisfying to do. If you liked this video, let me know in the comment section, hit the like button, share it with some friends. Also let me know what your recent problem solving accomplishment for gaming has been. I love hearing about those things. If you wanna pick up some tools or supplies, check out blackmagiccraft.ca. I have an essential equipment page there where I link to stuff that I use. If you wanna try playing Idols of Torment, uh, the PDF is available, the STL files are available, physical product will also soon be available after it's delivered to our Kickstarter backers. Check out idolsoftorment.com, grab the PDF, go to town. It's a super fun game, I promise. And it also allows for a lot of creative building. You don't have to use anything official, you can make everything yourself. It is a kit basher terrain builders perfect game because there's, there's lots you can do with it. If you really enjoy these videos and you wanna help me keep making them, of course, you can always join the Black Magic Craft Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the fellowship. That's it, that's all. I'm very pleased. 
I will see you again next time. Cheers.